Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a Banggood window shopping video and just seeing what's new because I haven't done one of these videos in a very long time. And there's a lot of new things that have been released, some on the way, some stuck in customs, some got sent back. So let's get started. Now the way this thing works is I'll leave a link to everything down below in the order that we are checking it out. So let's start out with the multi-rotor parts. So the Eoshin trash can, well, once we get to it, let's get started. So here we have the Mamba motors. They're pretty good motors, not the best. I still recommend for 11XX motors, the Emax 1106, I think. Those are my favorite micro motors for uh, the 11XX class, basically. Uh, they can go up to a 3 inch, 2 inch, and a 2.5 inch, and I really like those motors. Also, T-Motor released some, which we'll be seeing very soon. Here's just some cameras. Mamba stack 45 but oh, it's not the Mamba stack. Well, I guess they this guy starts went to the same manufacturer and got it made also. So it's really cheap. It's really crazy how cheap this thing actually is. In the way that it's performing, it's really great. I mean, this will get a lot of people into the hobby, and especially if you're broke, it'll keep you ungrounded. Now, this thing is hella interesting. I mean, let's take a look at this. Here's the first link down below. Now this is the Maytech F722 mini flight controller with OSD, dual gyro, 5 volt, 2 amp for RC drone, and it can be used for a wing. Now, this is not the only best part. If we take a closer look here, we see C1 and C2. You might say, what the hell is C1 and C2? Camera 1, camera 2, which you can switch between two cameras inside your Betaflight or iNav, I believe. I don't know if the code's ready, but you can totally do that. It has a dual cam switch on board, which is one pretty insane little thing. And if I were to do some awards for flight controllers, this would get, I think, the most innovative flight controller of 2018 or possibly even 2019 because it just, I think, got released in 2019, if I remember correctly. Anyways, so we can see we have dual gyros. We have the MPU 6000 and the 2062 here. We have an F7 microcontroller unit. The gyros are speaking over SPI, something you want to see. The OSD over SPI, also something you want to see. 32 megabytes of flash memory. So that is really nice if you didn't want to install an SD card or you just had an issue. Now you have memory for the flash uh, for your black box, which is really nice. No barometer, but it can be installed externally and you will get into that in a little bit. Five UARTs with built-in inversion. Well, it's an F7, so obviously we have an inverter. Soft serial support. Eight output, eight digital outputs, which can uh, output D-Shot, ProShot, and OneShot. Not PWM. These are digital because D-Shot is digital. PWM is analog. All right, so what else do we have here? We just have another connector. VBAT filtered output power for VTX. What does that mean? That means there's some sort of, you know, a, a LC filter. It's just filtering out some of the noise that can go to your VTX from noisy ESCs. Now check this out. This also gets really awesome. Switchable via auxiliary. That means you can turn off the VTX if you wanted to in the modes tab user one which is insane i cannot believe how the hell they fit, fit every single thing on this board not check this out dual camera also switches via auxiliary rssi beeper obviously they're not installed but you can connect them and they do that for people who don't know additional adc for inav analog airspeed so this is an analog digital converter for inav if you're going to be taking the airspeed while you're flying so this is 100 percent compatible with inav and it's something really nice of Maytech. Really nice. We have a 3.3 volt regulator running at 200 milliamps maximum. And this is used to power up the gyros as well as the flight controller and a possibly 3.3 volt uh, receiver for using something like a Spectrum. They have the, obviously their documentation is well documented. So it'll tell you exactly what you need to set up your voltage sensor and current sensor. I don't think this has a current sensor to be honest, but maybe it does. No, no current sensor built in. So it takes 2 to 8S LiPo. Again, remarkably insane. 5 volt, 2 amp, continuous, and a maximum of 3 amp, which is not recommended. 2 amp is a hell of a lot. That's, that's, it's just, yeah, it just speaks for itself here. And we can just go down and it has some other things. But overall, this is absolutely remarkable for a 20 by 20 stack. Here we have, look at this, check this out here. The OSD, the two gyros, and I think this is the flash memory right here. Where is the analog? Hold on. Let's see if we could find the analog switch or the video, the, the analog video switch. Uh, it's going to be really difficult like this. But once we have it in our hands, and I do have one on the way. I have a couple on the way, to be honest. Um, we'll, we'll see that overall. But this is a hell of a... Cr oh, it's pretty expensive. I mean, I don't blame them. I don't know how many layers this PCB actually is down below. But this takes a lot of... Man, I, let me explain something to you. 
I had the most difficult time setting up a 30 by 30 board. I mean, it took forever, ages, to set up OSD, 5 volt, 3.3 volt regulator, and just a microcontrol unit with USB. It's just setting that up and just routing four pads for the, the motors was just insane. To do all of this is remarkable. Their engineering team or their PCB designing team is phenomenal. And plus they do everything in house. So that's something a huge plus about Maytek and their customer support is just beautiful. And a lot of people would agree with me here. Wow, that took a lot for just one flight controller. Let's move on. New frames. Frames, frames, frames. I haven't touched a frame in so long because people bitch so much. Uh, hopefully this is not a clone. I'm really hoping it's not a clone and um, I am going to be picking this up. This is pretty interesting. It can fit five inch props in the front and six inch props in the back. Nothing new, but it has the, they, they released a bunch of different sizes and um, overall durability. I know they use, when they say 7075 aluminum, I know Geb RC uses 7075 aluminum. One of the best aluminum is on their frames. And um, yeah, it's really nice. I mean, it's really well thought out now. I mean, we, the, you know, these things have started to age now with us and they know what the market needs. For example, you know, this nice flat top here in such a frame in order to put your HD camera and it's already at an angle and um, it's looking sexy. I don't know about you, but this is looking pretty damn sexy for me. So yeah, it looks really good. So I can't wait to get my hands on this. 102 grams. It's a freestyle frame. It's not a racing frame. So I'll have this link down below. Also, you can check that out and obviously those links do help the channel quite a lot and uh this super clean stuff i don't know what it is it's probably just like some kind of a cleaner for your electronics i'll keep take a link for this i'm planning on picking some up once i have a little bit of cash just to try it out and see what it's good for frames 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 have just been so boring for me lately let's see what else do we have everything was dead for a while like it was just super slow what is this the mamba 1408 don't really care let's see you know what Banggood needs? Banggood needs cheap LED like whoop gates. Those are those are really interesting. I do have a let's start here first. Maytech System X Class FC Hub. Now this is a PDB for an X Class um, drone, which I am going to be building very soon. And the parts will be sponsored by iFlight since they've released an X Class frame and X Class motors. Now what's left for me to do is I have them getting this PDB from Maytech. It's going to be a really pretty premium i would say setup and don't know what flight controller to use just yet possibly possibly a new holly bro or a new maytech one of the new maytechs i don't know just yet we'll figure that out soon enough i'll have a link to this down below it's a really great deal 26 bucks to handle 12s input 5 and a 12 volt output current sensor it's just really nice so that's really nice that they've tried to hit that void that was in the market for x class now the 6s where is it is this it no, this is not it. This is not it. Is it? I think this is the 6S Eoshin Wizard. I do have it. And, you know, the pictures don't really do it justice of how well the build quality is. I haven't flown it yet. Right now, it's snowing. I'm planning on flying the trash can in the snow. But again, I don't want to just crash right as soon as I, um, you know, take it out. And then I just don't have a video for it. So the Metal ESC. Now, this is a pretty interesting ESC. The FETs on there are just incredible. The The... Just the overall ESC here, the overall execution of it was absolutely phenomenal and it tested just remarkable. And to uh, do, I will be running stress testing. I'll have this, this link down below also. To do the stress testing on this, I'm going to do two ways, indoor and also I'm going to be setting it up on the X class. I think it's capable of that. Uh, no, it's 12. I don't know what, what S battery I'm going to be running on the X class, but if it is up to a 6S, uh, if it's a 6s then i'm going to be uh setting up these escs and see how well they perform because you're saying 65 amps and they were performing pretty damn good here on the bench testing all right let's see what else do we have all right so this is a really nice combo it's a it's it's it comes with the r9 receiver assuming that you do have the r9 module here um now i don't know if this is going to be connected together because they're not really putting any other pictures so you're going to get this really nice antenna with the r9 receiver and this is I'm guessing it's going to be for the 900 megahertz, so the US, uh, the FCC version, and it is an F7 microcontroller. Oh, sorry, F4. Where's the F7? I don't know if it's the F7. So this is the F4 with just an MPU 6000 gyro. There's an F7 version also. I'll have this one linked down below, but I don't think they released the F7 with the R9 uh, MM receiver just yet, but we'll see that as we go down. This one's really nice. Uh, this one's on the way currently. Uh, I already have one of these, but the one with the R9, I don't have. I have one with the RSXR, I think. Yeah. So here's the Omnibus F4 V2 fire, uh, 
what is it flight controller it does take quite a lot of stack height but it, theoretically this thing is absolutely um it just has some crazy options I and mean, if you missed my video they have set up pads for you to go purchase some pretty darn they're not expensive but they're considered expensive for smd components you can install your own uh tantalum capacitors basically on each port of the esc uh they don't have a picture here to show it to you but if you check my video on this you will see that it's actually a pretty remarkable piece of uh flight controller basically this one i forgot actually to pick this up this is the uh Yushin tyro it's a kit it's 80 bucks i don't know how well it's gonna fly but if fly if it flies pretty decent then you know this is gonna introduce get a lot of people into flying basically also i know a lot of people hate Yushin, but actually Yushin's is doing quite good um lately so it, they do have hit and miss products but they release so much into the market that it's just ridiculous so the motors are seems to be slightly underpowered just a little but you can always replace the motors anytime 20 amp esc uh what's the flight controller f4 flight controller with an icm gyro that's pretty crazy and um yeah it looks it looks good i mean we'll just have to wait and see how well this is going to perform i'll have to link to this down below also and let's see what else do we have all right so here we have t-motor micros now this one's pretty interesting it's it's just basically almost identical to the diatone mamba stack inside we do have hd recording capabilities which i think they're using the yeah, run cam split mini right here as you can tell the 200 milliwatt vtx but the only difference here are the motors now i'm i'm really curious to try these t-motor motors out because i never tried them if you were to get these micros i highly recommend you go with a 2.5 inch or above because something like this to be on a two inch will be really heavy and um, it just won't be very enjoyable the 2.5 inch class will give you good flight outside and outdoors as well as kind of indoors but i think it'll be overpowered for indoors but yeah this one this one seems nice i am planning on uh getting this as well to test out so let's see this is a really this is ten dollar esc i have no idea how good this is but it looks like it could be good i'll link this down below it has a lot of filtration i think i do have these on the way big fets here um let's see yeah, a lot a lot of filtration on the board those tantalum capacitors look like they were burned basically or just uh they used too much heat to fuse them in quality doesn't look the best of quality but it's okay i guess we'll we'll have to see how well that's gonna perform is it an f3 no is it wait well uh, what is it let's see what do we have so razor 32 50 amp 35 amp esc built-in current sensor uh no just uh it's, it's, it's the cortex m0 so it's not an f3 uh, esc i'll have a link to this down below if you want to go ahead and check that out all right let's see what else do we have here we'll just go a couple more pages on this and then we'll skip over to something else all right let's see what else do we have what else do we have these are kind of the same i like the the xing or xing motors tt tt how many t's is that i need glasses by the way i just figured out i need glasses the other day uh what is this tttrc so it's titty rc we got f7 it's an 8 uh, it can go up to an 8s supposedly here capacitor i mean use the capacitor or else it'll blow up Filtration somewhat minimal. What are we using here? An F7 dual flight controller. So dual, yes, MPU 6000, ICM 20. Okay, what else do we have? 5 volt, 3 amp. Supports 144 LED lamps, which I think is absolute bullshit because look, the maximum power supports on what kind of LEDs? Uh, it could support a lot possibly, but here's just, it's, you know, it's a 5 volt, 3 amp. 3 amp, I believe, is maximum, so we can say 2 amps here um okay what else do we have 160 ounce copper foil with stands bigger current so i can actually i think i could test that okay 220 amps is the maximum this eac could support in terms of it just doesn't really make sense or am i missing something here it i don't know I don't know what to say. Oh my god, it's so expensive. Anyways, I'll leave a link to this down below. Anyone use it, please let me know down in the comment section. Is it worth for me to get and test? Because um just the way they, they did this just doesn't, you know, it doesn't attract me uh into actually grabbing it. Now this I purchased 10 of these, and I highly recommend everybody purchase 10 of these or so. These are just to discharge your lipos, which is really nice, but I'll do thorough tests on it with some of the equipments that I have here. So 
let's take a look what do we have here guys okay that's enough for this let's go somewhere else let's go to fpv systems let's check out what's new lately i've been getting obsessed with cameras especially fxt cameras they are pretty insane and i'll have a video on that later oh my goodness yesterday I, I released a post this was selling for five bucks damn the, sh the thing jumped to 19 dollars 18 dollars this was never 18 dollars this was always around 10 bucks yesterday it was selling for five bucks they had 100 pieces left so yeah but now it's just not really yeah it's not yeah anyways what do we have here oh this is the 1500 milliwatt vtx with integrated cooling fan system so this is on the way currently um and we're gonna see how well this does and i do have equipment to actually start testing these and giving you real um data results other than just talking about it and i set it up on 200 milliwatts and i i mean that is also good like real world testing but i also want some numbers and some data because you know it's just it's just better because you just decide you decide on yourself i just do the commentary or just my opinions and then basically you decide on the data you see fxt uh gesture box control i do have that i haven't used it the reason why is because i want to go ahead uh, this is linked down below it's actually a pretty good price to be honest um i don't know how good it will be in the field i mean i find it i could see how it could be somewhat useful um but i'm really curious to see how it's going to perform and i really want to dissect it and f try to figure out how, how it's working and, and and all these types of things which i think would be pretty interesting 2.4 gigahertz with long range two point yeah this i have it and i've tested it but i've actually ended up removing it i'm not using it anymore it feels sluggish it's very sensitive to interference and noise and it's um it just needs more work you know the 5.8 gigahertz it just feels so much more reliable it's weird i can't explain it but um you know this has its own use case and for me it wasn't that great but i'm gonna give it another try very soon um but yeah overall i'll have a link to this down below it's, theoretically you should get a lot more range if you don't have a lot of interference um but yeah we'll we'll come back to that in a later day so this one, I don't know if you guys seen it. I'm gonna, trying to get one from Banggood. I'm not going to buy this. I'm going to try to get one from Banggood and just to see if it's good or not. And um, I don't know what to say, but uh, yeah. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I'll leave it linked down below also. All right, what do we have? This is a really good freaking antenna. It's a really, really great antenna. No bullshit. Four kilometers was remarkable. It's not as sensitive as the higher DBI. And I don't I don't truly believe it's 8.4 DBI. I think it's a little bit less because the less the DBI, the less concentrated or the less uh, precise you have to be pointing to where the airplane or quad is. This patch, I think, is really, really great. It's actually really, really good, to be honest. And... Um, this might be my new daily driver after I test it on the HDO because I only tested this on the ground station and it outdid everything that was tested on the ground station. Kind of outdid everything, yeah. And it was the cheapest too, which is really good. I mean, it's 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 great. And obviously, you know, the antennas do matter of what you're using, but I was using a circular, I was using a Pagoda 2 on the transmitting part and I was receiving with this guy. Yeah, it's, it's recommended for me, that's for sure. I mean, if it can get me four kilometers of range, it's a beast. I mean, it's working great actually, so uh, yeah. I do also have this, the Furious FPV Achilles uh, firmware. This has so many features. I come here and I try to make the video, but it just has so much things going on for it. I haven't done any real world testing on it just yet, but it's um, it's really good. It has some crazy things like, like race timer and stuff. And I also have the docking on the way so we can actually see it in its full uh, performance, basically. So this is what I was talking about the other day, if, you, if any of you have been watching my channel. This is really nice. Two pieces, real ACC Pogata antennas. Uh, IPEX port and I believe MMCX so if you wanted some you can pick some up here I'll have this link down below two of them for for um, For six bucks is, is really great because these are really cheap to make especially PCB I'm actually thinking of designing my own PCB antenna and uh, just for fun and just Opening it for everybody like open source so you guys can play with it I have this on the way because I have a couple large airplanes that I'm currently working on this is a gimbal for the basically you put it on your on whatever you could stick it on something and it'll be really nice so i have this on the way it's really nice and i'm very curious to see how well it's going to perform after i make sure that my plane will be able to carry that thing or one of them at least 
let's see i think here everything is uh pretty basic i have this on the way i have this oh, i haven't made the video on this just yet but i can't even do anything it's been snowing like crazy i'm just i'm just stuck in the shop let's see radios and receivers new all right so what do we have here radios and receivers you see the drone mesh vusb all-in-one dongle this is really nice because this does a lot of things it helps you flash it helps you do a lot of cool things i'll have a video on this up very soon and it's also a really nice way to support the channel uh that would be super awesome if you can pick one of these up it'll allow you to play uh, with any receiver that is ibus or sbus compatible on any simulator which is really nice so you just uh, solder your receiver to this and uh, you're good to go so if we take a look down here Where's the picture? So here's the iBus connection. You go to iBus, you give it 5 volt, and you give it ground, and then you can start playing after you download the correct software. SBus would go to FR Sky here, and you have to enable this. Very basic and very simple. This has an inbuilt inverter for SBus. That's why it'll work. And I'm using the CH340G chip, which is a lot faster than Arduino. So it's about as fast as the Arduino without overhead, and it's faster than the FTDI chips. And you can do a lot of things that need USB to serial connections, flashing receivers, flashing whatever, and just checking your GPS if it's working. Uh, you can do a lot of crazy cool things with this. So, yeah, this is a really nice way to support the channel. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's actually very useful. I call it the Swiss Army Knife. I use it all the time now since it does everything for me. And, well, I think that's it, really. Um, let's go into airplanes. So, if you want to stick around for airplanes... Uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm actually really enjoying airplanes a lot. Long range airplanes, not just flying in a circle. It's really fun and it's really, um, it, it's, it just gives it, it's just more adventure. I mean, I can't explain it. It's just really nice. Once you have everything set up with iNav, you know, auto launch and everything, you just walk into that middle of the field, toss it in the air, walk back to your car while it's just going straight up into the sky. Uh, I really like that. I'm going to try to get one of these in. These are pretty expensive, but those would be really cool for uh, long range testing. So I'm trying to get l l long, longer and longer range. But currently, to be honest, my favorite till this moment, I haven't flown my Dart XL, is the Zod Orbit. The Zod Orbit with uh, 3100 milliamp lithium ion packs uh, will fly for a pretty damn long time, which is. It's pretty remarkable, actually, and it's very efficient. Three, four amps cruising. Um, it's really this is a really good one once you get it set up just right. And I have the V2. It's not foam on the bo bottom anymore. It's actually plastic, or, or actually just here. It's all the plastic. It's a really good one, really good one. And when it first comes out, I mean, when you get it out of the box, they already have this inbuilt. I have a build video to show you what I actually did to it. It comes with this, um, basically, kind of like a flight controller. Or a stabilizer and it'll do the takeoff for you it'll get you just to get used to the, the the airplane itself and then feel how it's working and then once you feel brave enough then you can go ahead rip that out and stick your iNav in there and um i'm planning on making just another dedicated video for this to give you my correct iNav settings uh to have you know auto launch absolutely perfect and i actually want to show you all this in the field also uh but this is a really 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 great um airplane it's really good actually i've crashed it a couple times and it was just so easy to fix uh, but overall it flies really nice if you get the cg just right it, it's it's remarkable i i really like this airplane when the zod dart came out i was like oh that's gonna be my favorite i wrecked that thing twice so far because i had inav completely wrong for launch control now i fixed it i have two dart xl so i don't know how well that one's gonna fly just yet but it'll be up soon once the snow goes away or actually if the snow stops i'm just gonna go and fly it Actually, no, I'm scared to fly something new in the snow. I'll probably just go fly this one. And, well, I think that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Comment on every single thing you saw and you had an idea about. Or just have an opinion or a comment about. And, or if you've used also. So let everybody know how well that went for you. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.